as you know from the studies we've done for the last three years, we, we, we saved 20% in the first year, but that hasn't changed. We've maintained it in the second year. We have some long-term changes that have been put in place that suggest we ought to be able to keep a reduction. But going beyond that, much beyond that 20% figure on behavioural changes, is probably fairly unlikely. I think we need now to take the next step and look at projects such as installing a microgrid to help bring those savings down even further. We're at the primary school discussing the microgrid. Could you just explain to me what the concept is all about? What we've been doing is in Ashton Hayes looking at the idea of how part of a village can use small scale generation and actually take ownership of their, their energy use and try and match their energy use to that generation. We've project managed the, the, the feasibility study and also uh, carried out uh, some of the technical work, the monitoring, particularly the monitoring of electricity use in people's homes and also we've erected two small weather stations to measure the wind resource and, and the solar power resource within the, the village. In their homes we've asked people um, in the specific study area of the microgrid to house what's an energy monitor and that monitors the electricity they're using 24 hours a day taking readings every five minutes so that I can then go and download the data once a month and we have a record of just how much power is being used in the wires in this area. Okay I, I think you've noticed Bill having this in the house has meant you become much more aware of the electricity you're using. Oh, far too much, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I get quite mean with it, you know. I come running in to see which, which, how much has gone up. Right. And then I run back and switch it off, switch especially, off especially the uh, clothes dryer. Yes, because yes. that's, that's a very that's heavy a, user yes, of power. Yes. Uh, so as well as providing us with lots of data, it's, um, it's helped you as well then manage your use of electricity. One of the things that we f found it, as we started looking at the concept was that somewhere like a school, which is a focus for a lot of different people in the village, is a really good point of, sort of connection for that generation. It's probably the first time that we've tried to put together a community energy project like this using the existing distribution network, so using the existing wires, and match that to an economic framework that actually allows the community to really take ownership of their own sort of energy economy. The whole idea of the feasibility study was that it's something that could be used in a whole lot of different places, not just necessarily a village but it could be a housing estate or a retail park for example. What we're trying to do is to move away from single unit generation where one house might have its own few photovoltaic cells and a small wind turbine and try to put together a cluster of microgeneration, small scale renewable generation and use that to feed a number of houses and community buildings where the patterns of power use will be different so that when one building is not using power another one is and by having the generation locally based that means we cut down the transmission losses that, that are associated with the, with the major national grid. What we're looking at here is small-scale generation connected to the LV network. That power is coming from your standard coal fire power station. As well as finding out where we could connect that generation, we're also trying to find out actually how much is being used on one particular feeder. So with the network operator who look after those wires for us, we've been monitoring how much power is being used as one of those wires feeding people's houses, but then also looking at how much power is being used by individual houses, not just how much, but when they're using the power. Well, the response has been fantastic. People have been very, very supportive, very willing to, to house the Watsons. People have um, been very willing to come forward and join focus groups. We've, we've used a number of focus groups to help us plan and, and check every step of the work as we've gone through it to, to get feedback from them to ensure that what we're doing has a high likelihood of acceptance by the local population. And we also had a group of volunteers who helped us erect the, uh, the two weather stations as well. So they turned into fun community events. But also have been a whole lot of other players. For example, we've had politicians, we've had a number of different communities come because they were interested in the whole idea is that it, this is for more than one community. The key role within the microgrid study area itself, within Church Road, was 
getting people to be prepared to put a what's in their house. And of course, we couldn't just put those anywhere in the village. We needed to monitor the usage on that low voltage feeder line. So I had to go knock on every door and find out who was willing to have them. We got them in about half the houses on, that are fed by that line. And more than half the people were willing to have them. I didn't even have to get in, end up going to every house. And what's been interesting is the way people have, have made use of the, having those in their house as well. Bill Nunley, for instance, has, has learned a lot about his patterns of power usage during the day and just exactly how much each appliance he has in the house is using. But we've had a lot of other interest as well in that two landowners have, have very kindly allowed us to use their land to erect our weather stations so that we can monitor wind, wind speed and also solar energy input to the area. And we've also had no problem at all recruiting people quite a few of whom live in that piece of road, that part of the village, but also from throughout the village to, to sit on our focus groups and a lot of interest generally across the village when we've held meetings. We started off with an initial village meeting, uh, which was a public meeting, everybody was invited. That was in July of, of 2008. And the idea there was to present the concept of the village, to introduce them to what the feasibility study was about and to gauge the willingness of people to be involved, and particularly to recruit members to our focus groups. This is purely a feasibility study, so the weather stations are there to monitor exactly how much wind power we have and to find out what the average wind speed is, but also how that varies through a day, through a month, through the year. And the same with, with solar, solar energy input as well, so that we can match the input from the potential generation from those inputs uh, against the load that we know is being used in this part of the village. Well, the response has been quite remarkable to, to, to funding. Um, when, we, when I spoke at the Leapfrog meeting in, in London back in February of 2009, I was surprised by the amount of, of interest. I think there's a recognition of the need to move to distributed generation and community-based schemes becoming reality in the, in the very near future. And I, and I think people who have reasonable vision of, of where things are going over the next five or ten years are keen to get involved in this at an early stage. The whole idea of this project is that we're using as much as possible the existing infrastructure of electricity, uh, not only just because it's there already, but it also means if the generation isn't operating, then we just use our standard um, generation as normal. One of the proposals is that we can do it in a sort of modular construction. We don't have to do it all at once. It's um, very encouraging to see how much momentum uh, the project is gathering and how many other organisations are showing interest and willing to support um, the project as it grows and develop, develops. And although it was a, a feasibility study, it was looking at how the, the community here would accept uh, a technological solution to um, carbon reductions and the project was also looking at what was required from a technological perspective um, and a legal and uh, regulatory perspective. One of the things that we can do is particularly to profile what is an incredible case study of success um, and actually maximise the benefits of that to help it be replicated elsewhere as well. Um, we can help try and engage our members and use our networks to try and support Ashton Hayes and what it's trying to achieve. Um, but we can also help try and spread that best practice. Um, and I think one of the really interesting bits to, put, to pick out from the Ashton Hayes example is how you successfully included business support right from the word go, um, which seems to have been very, very critical to your, to your success in getting where you have. Many of the residents have, a, have an interest here because we've deliberately picked this area, partly because it, we can centre it on the school and it has, has a reasonable mix of, of buildings, which of course includes not just the school but the church, the village hall, the women's institute hall. And so amongst that set of community buildings, most people in the village will use them at some time or other um, on, on a fairly regular basis. So everybody um, can perceive a gain, even if it's not their own domestic electricity supply. There hasn't really been any opposition at all. There's been a little bit of scepticism perhaps, but, but very little of that. It's part of the reason for running the focus groups was to not just have the people who sit on the focus group involved in, in exploring the ideas we were putting forward, but we asked them to we give them questions in advance and have asked them to talk to their friends and neighbours and to bring their questions, their concerns to us. And they, they've done that and there hasn't really been much in, in, in the way of negatives at all.